Hey, deserving listeners, this is part two in which I watched Ethan and Trisha on Frenemies with Dr. Drew. In the last video, I talked about how a lot of people are asking me to react to it. I asked people, which video should I watch? And then a lot of people said, don't do it. There's too much drama. And then I said, okay, I'm not going to do it. And then I decided to look at it just because I was curious. And I thought, um, I think there's a few things I can say about what's happening here without getting involved in the drama. And mainly, I just want to comment on Dr. Drew's technique because I'm a couples therapist. I'm a relational therapist. And presumably, that's what they're going to model here. My name is Dr. Kirk Hanna. I'm a therapist and a professor. Let's get to this show. Okay. Oh, my God. So, goodness. so, Imre, so oh I didn't know her goodness. at all. I didn't even know her name. And then I did that. You're one then... of those people on the internet, my man. <laughs> Wait, me? No, no, he is. Oh. Okay. Atta- feeling free okay. to attack people he doesn't know. Exactly. Okay. Wait, what do you mean one of those people? <laughs> one of those people that I've, I'm swatting off every day. That uh... Okay, so Ethan shows this previous video that he made before he met Trisha, before he knew Trisha, in which he was essentially making fun of her. And then Dr. Drew says, oh, you're one of those people. And Ethan says, what do you mean by one of those people? And then Dr. Drew says, well, you're one of those people that I'm constantly swatting away on the internet that just feels like you can just make fun of anybody. And again, if your purpose here is to help the two of them with their communication, help the two of them resolve their conflict, why would you want to alienate one of them or both of them as he's risked up until this point by pointing stuff like that out? Now, as a therapist, these are these are issues that we always deal with. We might see a behavior in a client and think, oh, I don't like that. Uh, they're one of those. You might even have that thought as a therapist. You're like, oh, you're one of those people. I mean, to give an extreme example, I was talking with this teenager one time and he told me that he had actually been recently caught stealing four cars in the span of a month. And one of them, I think he even crashed. And I was talking with him and he says, oh, it's many more than four cars. I've, I've stolen a car every night for the past month. And I think my car or someone I knew had had their car broken into recently. And in my head, I thought, oh, you're one of those people. (laughs) Do you not understand that those are people's vehicles for to get them to work that you know working people put a lot of money into those things but i'm a therapist and i'm there to help and to say that is to ruin their relationship and to risk having the treatment just come to a screeching halt so you don't say stuff like that you 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 file it away then after the session you're like you know you vent you talk to your therapist you talk to your supervisor or whatever but in session you don't want to do that Now, again, maybe Dr. Drew, if I pulled him aside, he would say, no, no, I'm doing it on purpose. I'm doing it because of this. I'm trying to get Ethan to think about his behavior or whatever. Um, But generally speaking, if I saw a trainee do this, I would go, whoa, you need to learn how to edit what you say, particularly in the beginning of of treatment. (laughs) That's the part that's extraordinary. He was in a music video. Okay, can I can I? So so here's the deal. It's just it's just a terrible place to begin a relationship. Have you ever apologized (laughs) for that? So let me just make a Have you apologized for that? Yeah. I think I did. You did not. When you came on the show. (laughs) You definitely never apologized. I will say that when you, the fact that you, you, now that I know you. All right. So Dr. Drew asked a very good question. Again, a little ham fisted. Have you apologized for that? Well, that assumes that Ethan is sorry. It's a good direction to go in. I I actually facilitate a lot of apologies. Uh, a lot of couples therapy involves apologizing. Even for things that you feel like, well, I don't really feel like I did anything that terrible, but my spouse feels as though I did, and so I need to apologize for that. There's a wide range of things that you would apologize for, from just horrible transgressions, like I'm sorry that I cheated on someone, and all the apologies that are involved in that over a span of years, to um, I can see how what I did hurt your feelings. Uh, I'm telling you, I did not mean to hurt your feelings. And, but I I hear you that what I did hurt your feelings and made you upset. And I'm really sorry about that. So it's hard for me to know what Dr. Drew is thinking in this moment. Is he thinking my mission is to help the two of them get along. And by getting Ethan to apologize, that will help that. Okay. That would make sense to me. Or is he just thinking, well, what's fair? You know, how do I, you know, I'm the judge and the jury regarding what's fair here, which seems to be the tone of the meeting thus far of like determining who's right, who's wrong, which often is what the people coming to therapy 
will come, they'll come with that mindset of, I'm right, they're wrong. And I'm going to make sure that this doctor agrees with me and blast this other person. So if that's his mission, then mission accomplished, because he's basically saying, Ethan, you did something wrong and you need to apologize. Have you apologized? I'm going to shame you. And you did something bad and you need to apologize. Now, maybe y'all agree out there or think that he does, he should apologize to Trisha. Okay, fine. But how do you facilitate that? You don't just yell at someone and tell them to apologize. What I would do is, you know, something along the lines, I would say, Ethan, so you made that video before you knew Trisha. Now that you know Trisha, how do you feel about that video? What, you know, do you think it was a good idea? Do you think that it was a mistake? Do you think you were fair? Do you think you were unfair? I would listen to Ethan and I, it, maybe he says something like, well, I don't know, it's, that's just what I do. I do this kind of thing. Okay, uh, then I would turn, so Ethan is sort of dropping the ball, but then I would turn to Trisha. This is the beauty of having everyone in the room, beauty of relational therapy, that this is the beauty of marriage and family therapy. I would turn to Trisha and I would say, so when you saw that video, tell me all the feelings that, that you feel. When you watch it right now, tell me all the feelings. My guess is usually what people will say is, I don't mind it, it's fine, you know, it's the internet. That's not likely. It, it, there's gotta be at least a little bit of hurt there, <laughs> it, a little bit of embarrassment there. Even though she was the one, she just said, I posted those pictures, I don't have a problem. But, you know, to be made fun of, it, it hurts a little bit. Anyway, so I would probably try to get at that. Maybe she's not hurt by it, who knows. But if she was, even a little bit, I would try to get to that. And then I would say, okay, so you're saying that when he posted that, it hurt your feelings a little bit. Is that what you're saying, Trisha? And she would say, yeah, I guess it hurt my feelings a little bit. Okay, so Ethan, knowing that it hurt her feelings, how do you feel about that? Okay, so you, under, you see the, the train that I'm on here is take each step at a time, give Ethan a chance to explore how he feels about it. If he doesn't, you know, because if you asked Ethan right away and he's like, I'm mortified that I posted that video back then. I do different kind of content right now. I don't know if he does, by the way. I feel bad that I posted that thing back then. I, I know Trisha now and I just feel like that's kind of mean. And, and then, okay, Ethan, did you want to apologize? I don't know. And then you say, yeah, I want to apologize. And then you facilitate that apology. And usually a, the apology can take a long time. There's a lot of elements to an apology that I've talked about before. Then we shift to Trisha and say, do you accept his apology? Because maybe she doesn't. And maybe she's got a lot of feelings. She's like, yeah, well, I kind of do, but I don't because you didn't, you didn't mention this part in, in the apology. You, you mentioned this part, which is fine, but you didn't mention all this other stuff that you've done to me along those lines. So then, you know, to rebuild the relationship, we're going to have to have those conversations. So let's, let's rewind and watch that again. The fact that you, po you, now that I know you, you are very upfront about how you look without makeup and the whole process of being quote unquote beautiful and all that. And so there are a lot of people who I think are deserving of the criticism because the whole theory of the video was like, all right, so there's a little bit of an inroad there. Ethan, I think was saying, now that I've met you, I now understand the context for those pictures that I was reacting to. And if I could go back, if I knew that, I would have worded it differently or I wouldn't have done the video at all. I don't know exactly what he's saying. But you notice it was just a, a tiny little bit into that. And then he quickly bounces off of that and starts to go into some other topic. I hope Dr. Drew really focuses on that and says, okay, Ethan, it sounds like you're saying that you, you didn't know the context for those pictures. And tell me more about that. Are you saying that you wouldn't have done it otherwise? What are your feelings? Now that, now that you know, how do you feel about Trisha and the videos? You know, try to elicit some more of that, I guess, tenderness really. And that's a big part of uh, relational therapy is inspiring people's love and tenderness for each other. I don't know, but I'm going to assume that these two people do have tenderness for each other. There's a little bit of reference to it from Trisha. She's just like earlier on, I don't know if I included this clip. She's just like, we are we get along really well. We have a bond, but sometimes he just drives me crazy sometimes. So I would try to focus on that because that's what, that's what keeps us in relationships. That's what helps us through the conflict. When we're in conflict with someone and we don't have any contact with our compassion or tenderness, then all bets are off. We, we, don't, we don't hold back at all. All the ammo gets, gets thrown out at the other person. But if we have tenderness and love and care and a connection and a bond with the other person, we want to preserve that. We, all humans want to preserve that. Now, I don't know these two people. Maybe there's something different about either one of them that makes it harder for them to have that compassion. I don't know. I'm going to assume that they do have normal compassion. There's no, no reason to believe that they don't. 
So let's see if Dr. Drew uh, capitalizes on that little bit that snuck out of, of Ethan. Impressionable people who are on Instagram all day uh, think that that's the beauty norm, which is right. something point, that's impossible. Point taken, right? Yeah. The, but, the, the idealization through technology is not good for developing minds. Right. We all three agree on that, right? Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Yeah. But so, okay. So the, okay. So Dr. Drew is focusing on the second point that Ethan was making. The first point that Ethan was making was, I didn't know her like I do now. That's why I made the videos. That's that inroad of trying to eventually get to a connection and a bond and compassion and tenderness towards each other. But then Ethan said, but there, my other point is da, 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 about Instagram and about unrealistic uh, depictions of beauty. And then Dr. Drew focused on that. But, but I will say that Dr. Drew did say all three of us can agree on that. So that was actually, a, if he's trying to bond the two of them, which I don't know, that's actually a good way to do that. It's just like, okay, you both agree that as a relational therapist, that's gold, especially in the first session. Whenever you see the two people agree, you want to be like, oh, okay, I hear the two of you agreeing on that point and really focusing on that. Because a lot of times when you're butting heads, you believe you don't agree on anything. You know, just think about Democrats and Republicans. <laughs> Like, boy, do they hate each other. And so it's if you can identify that they agree on something, then that's how you can build trust and care and compromise. I got wrong when talking about you is that you are very upfront about how you look without all that. And so I was wrong about Trisha, that. Trisha, Trisha, this is, this is Ethan offering an apology. But it's not an apology. It's him like it trying is, it's, to it's, be it's, like. It is, it is, it is. Keep going. Okay, uh, again, this is a style thing. It, I'm not going to say it's a bad intervention because it wouldn't be unusual in the first session to be like, look, I'm not going to get this guy to apologize. So I've got to – I'll work on him apologizing in more depth later. But for today, I'm trying to get a little bit of connection. And so I will – I'll point out almost as a way of pushing Ethan. As long as Ethan doesn't disagree – then he's basically endorsing what I'm saying as a therapist of, okay, this is Ethan trying to apologize right now. Uh, do you understand that, Trisha? And then Trisha says, you know, no, you know, he's not apologizing. So again, it's pretty ham-fisted, meaning that it's hasty because there's other ways you could do this. I, I would go to Ethan. I would be like, so Ethan, this, the reason why you've been talking for the past, you know, 30 seconds is because I asked you if you've apologized and, and you explained a little bit. And I'm hearing an apology between the lines, but I'm not hearing a direct apology. So is there, is there a direct apology or not? You know, and I would try to coax that out of him instead of just ham fisting and saying like, by the way, Trisha, he's apologizing and, you know, you need to recognize that anyway. Ethan? <laughs> well, I, well, I was wrong about you. I think some of the people there are deserving of that criticism. But now that I know you, I, w I don't think that you are a person who should. So, yeah, I do apologize because I, I do think that, that that's not who you are because you're very forthcoming well, with that, thank about you. that. Awesome. Success. Two thumbs up for everyone, Dr. Drew included. <laughs> he did basically get the ball rolling in this way. And he made all the right moves, even though it was ham-fisted in my words. It did work. And that's always the thing when it comes to therapy is there's no rules to this sort of thing, particularly when you're dealing with individuals because everyone comes with different cultures and personalities and you just never know. And so even though it wasn't my style and no one has my style, every therapist has their own style, it worked in that Ethan just flat out apologized and she, Trisha said thank you, which is an acceptance of the apology, which is fantastic. I take back every criticism I, I've said of Dr. Drew thus far. He got them to this moment. Maybe all of his blunt ham-fistedness was a way of keeping things real such that this could happen. So, you know, let's continue watching. Oh. And I accept the apology and I love it. Can I just say one other thing to stand up for the other girls in the video? One being well, Nikita before you do, Before you do, I think that apology really moved you. Like, yeah, no. <laughs> Even you said you reason. loved it. You really do love it. So this is also good in that she quickly changes the subject to other women. Now, it is a worthy line of, of the conversation in that she might be saying, look, I, I don't want you just to apologize to me. I want you to apologize to all the other women that you've ridiculed. 
And I'm guessing that's where she's going. I don't know if Ethan has ridiculed other people, but it, it's not a terrible, it, it, that is a personal thing to Trisha, it sounds like. So it's not, it's not like outside of the therapeutic context for her to introduce that. But it is a pretty good thing for Dr. Drew to do if he's trying to help them to get along better, which I think this meeting is supposed to be doing, for him to say, let's not change the subject. Let's, let's really focus. And I do this all the time, and I'm trying to get my trainees to do this a lot, which is when something magical happens or when you're, something magical is about to happen, take your time and, and keep people in the room so to speak. They're in the apology room, you know, very briefly. And don't let them just go, you know, running out of the room and, you know, running all over the house. Like keep them in that room together and be like, let's live here for a second. Let's live, let's live here for three or four questions of the apology. Y you apologized. Good for you. And you accepted the apology and you're moved by that. Good for you. You're connecting. Let's focus on that. So two thumbs up for Dr. Drew to, for doing that. When she hadn't gotten the surgeries versus a butt picture of her after, but she's very open about Wait, that can too. Can you show that clip? Because I don't remember what yeah, I Yeah, and so you need to what apologize picture? to that, like to all that. Well, you let's know? see, let's see. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's rewatch. It's a big thing. I'm afraid I'm going to interfere too much with the conflict between you guys and the magic of the show is going to go away. No, no, we need help. <laughs> no, you're doing great. I could, I could yeah. quit today. You know what I mean? Like That's a good statement to say, too. If, if I was in that position, I'm quite sure I would have said something like that right from the beginning, which is, I'm really sorry. I'm really going to try to help the two of you to work on your conflict because that's my nature. And I feel like I'm going to ruin the show. I, actually, I do this a lot when, when people have me on their channels. They'll ask me questions. And I often am, I, I'm often either knowing of the context or I'm predicting the context is that everyone is looking for people to drum up conflict, to drum up anger and hostility between each other because I guess that's entertaining. And uh, I often will say stuff. I'll be like, so by the way, I think I'm going to ruin this whole conversation by actually trying to get people to have compassion for other people and not to pathologize others. So, yeah, I can I can relate to Dr. Drew in that moment. Like it's just one of those things that I'm still irritated by stuff that happened last week. I'm still irritated she just so much. She walked recently and it was like, I, let's get into it. I have talk a lot about it. Of we, like, have to save the, we have to <sighs> save the relationship. So Let's get we into it. We'll get into okay. that. That's okay. what's on. All right. Finally, after how many minutes into this, we finally hear an explicit statement from one of them, and the other one is agreeing as to why Dr. Drew is involved, which is save the relationship, which usually means reducing conflict and increasing the bond. So we finally have the reason. Now, maybe they communicated before they started recording about that very point, but at least as a viewer, I finally have heard that, which definitely helps for me to understand as a clinician about like, why am I here? What am I doing with you people? There's this misconception out there that you just call a therapist in and they just do stuff to you. Like I've had clients do that. It's, it's rare, but I'll have clients sit down on my couch and they'll be like, okay, fix me or, or not even fix me. They'll just be like, okay, what do you want to know? And I'll be like, well, what do you want to work on? And they'll, they'll literally say, this is very rare, but I've heard this of, well, you're the doctor. You tell me what I should be working on. And I'm like, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> but there's this misconception because that's often how it's portrayed in movies and TV is the client just sits down on the couch and the therapist just imposes their model on the person. And they never have a discussion as like, okay, what would you like this service to provide you? When you walk into a McDonald's, you don't just stand there and go like, okay. And then, you know, the cashier is like, uh, would you like to order? I don't know. You're the McDonald's employee. You tell me. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's exactly the same thing. It's a service. We provide service. We don't impose some, some sort of will on other people unless it's court mandated or something. But even then, there's usually a discussion anyway. I feel like it wasn't that offensive. That was before her surgery, and she's so open about getting surgery. She's a trans spokesperson. She's super open about it. You can't, that's not fair but to I be like, those like, are two different people. It is two different people. But I do feel like it's hurtful to young girls to see like a fat an ass like that and be like, why don't why doesn't my body look like that? I'm trying to stay out of the conflicts that they're having specifically because I don't know the background. But I will say that generally speaking, yes, to ridicule someone on the internet pre and post alterations due to a trans person expressing their gender on the outside is really irresponsible. Now, it's also true from Ethan's standpoint, he's saying, look, we need to stop these sorts of depictions of unrealistic bodies 
because that can cause a lot of harm. Yes, that's also true. Both of these things are true, but in the process of trying to raise awareness of, hey, we need to stop having these unrealistic beauty expectations because it's harming people, because it is, and it's getting worse, by the way. In the mission of that, we shouldn't be, we shouldn't be ridiculing trans people, right? So, so here's the deal with uh, when people declare things on drugs, everybody. They're on drugs. <laughs> Thank <right>? you. <laughs> they, they, they're fucked up. Let, let's, let's just leave it at that. Don't, do not try to interpret well, hold what on people there, are saying. Yeah. Doing on what about people who are drunk and say things like... No, they're on drugs. I, that's, a, that's a mistake. Go, oh, they're true feelings coming out. Yeah, completely agree. Well, for the most part, I agree. There's this misunderstanding that, you know, a drunk, a drunk, there's an old saying, a drunk man's words is a sober man's thoughts. And certainly that can be true some of the time. But people often will overinterpret this, meaning that someone is super high or super drunk and they are saying certain things. And you're like, oh, that must be what they're really thinking, you know, normally. Maybe a part of their personality. But, but the, another way to think about intoxication, particularly on alcohol, is that parts of your brain are not functioning correctly. And when part of your brain is not functioning correctly, your personality isn't fully there to fully embody or to fully express your personality as it is really the real you. Your whole brain has to be working. When you observe enough people who are intoxicated, you realize this very quickly, <laughs> that when people are beyond a certain threshold of intoxication, who knows what they're gonna say or do. There may be some de-repression, there may be some things coming out that they wouldn't otherwise speak, but the way they speak and the way they speak about it is somebody on drugs. So give them a chance if they've revealed something to come back around and talk about what's really going on. Mm. And your brain isn't integrated. Your whole self isn't there when you're loaded. So we're getting you're getting a pass from Dr. Drew. It's not Drew a pass, but like if you watch nugget. if you pulled that video up, it's Yeah, completely agree with what he's saying. Absolutely. Now, Dr. Drew is in his realm. He is an addiction specialist. So it makes sense that he would say things that would be very on point and very much of the consensus. I don't think he's a relational therapist. I don't know. I haven't seen his resume. All right, well, that does it for the end of part two. I didn't realize how long it was going to take me to get through this. So tomorrow I'll post part three. And everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.